Now, I was watching some videos, um, a Big Clive video and a Julian Eilert video, and I noticed that they like to have big panels of flashing lights. And um, they're always fascinating, aren't they? Pla panels of flashing LEDs. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own. And here is my entry into the big panel of flashing lights competition. Here we are, I zoomed out a little bit to give you a little perspective on the size of it. Um, it's a 32 by 32 pixel array of LEDs. And what I've done is I've um, written the program to just randomly put dots on and off because we connect, this connects up to an Arduino. So let's take a look at um, what it is and what you could do with it and how useful a 32 by 32 pixel red dot LED display actually is. Yeah, so here you can see the full extent of this masterpiece then. So I've got the um, 32 by 32 LED display, which is actually composed of four sections of four. Um, they're individual modules that I got off eBay, which we'll take a look at in a second. And at the top here, I've got the good old fashioned Arduino Uno, which is just about capable of working with this. But I tried also with a, um, a Wemos D1 Mini, which is a ESP8266, or you could even try an ESP32, and it's much better. You need quite a lot of speed to get this thing going. The Uno can cope with it, but it's a bit on its limit. Also, it takes quite a bit of power to turn that many LEDs on. And you can see I'm just powering by USB. Uh, what I've done is I've turned down the intensity on the panels to the bottom setting. If you turn it up a bit, um, the whole thing keeps locking up because it draws too much current, which you can get around by providing an external power supply into the Arduino instead of pulling it all from USB. But I still think it's just for testing. It's a lot better to have it down at low intensity. And this is my improved version of the random dot display. I think I think it's far better to do something like a um, sort of a firework style pattern on it. I just think it's much better. Let's have a little close up of that. Um, as you can see, each of the LEDs is in a little round housing, which makes them look like round dots, makes them look like little balls. It's actually quite nice. I think they're quite nice panels, these things. Um, and they're not very expensive. If we take a look at one on eBay, they're only a few quid for... Um, one of the panels and you need four of them. I've just sort of glued four of them together to make a, a 32 by 32 display. So if we take a look at the back, you can see that each one of these panels uh, is its own unit. So you've got four square LED panels there. They're fixed onto a single PCB. So I've got four of those PCBs fixed together. And all I've done is I've joined all the uh, the lines together. So I've joined all the powers together, all the grounds together, all the data in pins together, all the clock pins together. And the only thing that's different is the chip select. So each one of these has got a chip select line. So I've ended up with four chip select lines. I've ended up with one five volt line, one ground line, one clock line, and one data in line, where obviously you're going to be sending in your serial data. Viewing it without the bit of um, transparent plastic on the top is not anywhere near as good. Although it looks all right, um, the, the contrast is pretty poor. Uh, but if you put a bit of semi-transparent, um, semi-opaque perspex over the top, it, it makes it a much, much better display. Yeah, and if we look at an eBay listing for it, you can see that they're not very expensive. Each one's only uh, a few pounds. And... What it is, basically, it's a Max 7219 microcontroller um, with four 8x8 LED displays st all stuck onto a PCB. And it's one of these things where if you tried to buy those individual components, you'd ne no way be able to get them for the price that they can sell it as a ready-assembled module on eBay. And there are some libraries available for Arduino already for controlling these things. You can look up various different ones. Um, I tried one called, I think it was MD Parola or something like that, uh, which showed, which could put text onto the display quite easily, but it couldn't do very much else. Uh, I looked at one called LED Control, uh, which is the one that I've used in my sketches uh, to control these displays. And basically what it does is it's working on one of the, one of the displays uh, it assumes that you've got a single strip of maybe four or or more of these um, LED blocks in a, in sequence. And I've just, um, what I've done is I've 
looped round, displaying stuff to this one, then to this one, then to this one, then to this one, by using each of the four chip select lines that I've got soldered up. So um, I found that the library's actually made things, for stuff like this, the library's actually made things more complicated than it needs to be, and I wanted to get down at the low level. So I used the library to set the panel up originally, um, but then I just communicate with the panel directly because it's just a, a very simple thing. You, you're you using SPI, you set, you do a chip select on whichever one of these four panels you want to send something to, and then you set a register, and there are eight registers, one for each of the eight lines, and you send eight bytes. So you send line one and the bytes for line one, line one again, and the, the, the next lot of bytes for line one, and it sort of pushes serial data in into line one, then you choose line two and you push um, bytes of serial data in for that one, then you choose line three and you push it in there, you work your way down to there, then you go onto your next panel and start pushing in data into the rest of the lines. And you can loop around that fairly quickly, even on the most basic and low level and boring Arduino, and it still manages to do the job, but you can do it about 25 times faster on a slightly more beefy microcontroller. So if we take a look at the code, um, just for the, the random dot uh, effect, I'm using this LED control.h, uh, which is the library that I was talking about. And all I've done, all you have to do is configure your data line, um, which is connected up on the back. Uh, they're called, actually they're called D in, I think. Yeah, D in. So the D in line, I've linked that to pin 13. The clock line, CLK on the module, I've linked to pin 12. Uh, and then I've got power and ground, and I've got the four chip select lines. I mean, it's pretty arbitrary which ones you use. In fact, using pin 13 on the Arduino is a bit daft, isn't it? Because that's the built-in LED on the Arduino. Um, but anyway, I've linked it up to those particular lines. Um, you then need to set up one of these. Well, you need to set up the four panels, which is why I've got LED control LC1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, and you say that they're four sections long each, so they're four, I've got four panels of four sections. And then all I do, well I'll show you actually, I'm, I, I started thinking could I make a game on this thing, so let me just upload this code and we'll see if we can see where I've got to so far. So not exactly hugely impressive, but um, what I've done is I've taken the, uh, uh, what, I'm do what I'm doing is I'm treating the whole screen as a buffer, so I've worked out that it needs 128 bytes in this buffer and I'm copying the entire buffer, uh, where am I doing that here? I'm copying the entire buffer out to the display. I don't know how many times per second it's doing it, to be honest, but as many times as the Arduino can manage. And then I'm just tweaking bytes in the buffer to draw things. And so whatever you draw into the display gets uh, mapped onto, well, whatever you draw in the buffer gets mapped onto the screen. So that's my first experiment with these kind of large LED style panels. I did spot on eBay, there's actually better ones than these now, there's multi-colour ones, and I might get, try and get hold of one of those. But I was thinking it might be quite nice to use one of these displays for some sort of retro game project, so I'll carry on working on that in the next video.